welcome back to my vlog obviously it's been a little while since uh, my last makes video i've actually decided to start with a knitting video today i guess the sewers amongst you probably aren't going to be too pleased with that um, but the sewing videos will come soon I have really gotten into knitting over the last couple of years since this whole pandemic started. I feel like I've finally had the time and the energy to really get into knitting in a way that I hadn't before. Before it always seemed much more like a chore. Like I really liked the idea of knitting, but actually doing the knitting always seemed quite long and laborious. And now I actually just enjoy the knitting process. I don't know what's happened. Um, maybe there was some sort of a threshold or barrier that I passed and suddenly now knitting is an absolute joy. Um, so I've knitted a few things since my last knitted thing I shared with you. I don't remember when that would have been. I've managed to finish a couple of sweaters, a slipover, a hat, and these are all using much more complicated techniques than I've done before. So as I said, I'm still kind of getting into knitting, so I'm still learning lots of these techniques, which is so much fun. And I wonder if that's why I'm enjoying it more than the sewing a bit at the moment, is that everything still feels new and fresh. Um, and I love the learning process, so that might be why I'm enjoying that a little bit more, because I'm trying out all these things for the first time. But there's a lot of course with the sewing, I'm much more experienced, um, and I've just sewn much more so it feels less exciting. That's not to say that I don't love sewing. I do. It's just, I think that I'm that person that loves new things. My partner always says that to me. He says I'm a complete neophile, um, basically just someone who loves to try new things all the time, which does explain a lot. So um, I thought I'd talk about the sweater that I'm wearing now and then I'll talk about the um, new things that I've been learning with the knitting and show you um, just a bit up close about what I've been doing. So the sweater that I'm wearing now is the Aosta sweater. I hope I pronounced that right, who knows. Um, it's a pattern by the Knit Pearl Girl who I found on Instagram. I actually didn't find her directly. I found someone else who was knitting this sweater and thought this is just a classic. I liked the kind of oversized cropped boxy shape, but it was the sleeve that got me. You guys know how much I love a puff sleeve. And I really just liked the general texture of it. Um, it's knitted top down, so the neck is knitted first. This is a folded um, collar, neckline, I don't know what you would call it. So you knit like a longer length, you fold it in two and knit them together and start knitting top down. So it's a raglan style. So you increase along these bits here until you get to the point where the body and the sleeve split. And then you knit the body separately and the sleeve separately at that point. This uses a slightly textured stitch called an Andalusian stitch, which means that every fourth row, you add a knit pearl row instead of just knits all the time. So it is a simple knit. I purposely wanted to do this though, because I learned to knit knit with my yarn in my left hand which I believe is called the continental style of knitting. Normally I knit English style which means the yarns in the right hand but someone was telling me how much faster you could knit if you knitted with your yarn in your left hand so I was like that sounds great let me try it um, and so I did. I'm, it, I'm not sure I'm 100% doing it right by the way I'm just doing what feels comfortable to me which I feel like is the right thing to do right. Um, so I, um, I've kind of worked out a way to hold the yarn in my left hand. It did take a while to learn. Um, I was probably maybe about here before it really felt kind of comfortable at all. And I was kind of getting into my groove. It has meant the tension around this top part is a little bit odd. Um, I did do a swatch. I did try to practice with the yarn in the left hand, but I was also very impatient. So I just kind of jumped straight into just doing the project and just getting on with it because I figured at the end of the day what does it really matter it's never going to be like that awful and if it was terrible I could just frog it and start back at the beginning again anyway it was faster I managed to knit this in about three weeks um, and doing it mostly in between um like my free time at work more than anything um, and it just went by so fast it is 
to be fair, knitted on some very chunky needles. You do knit them on seven millimeters. Um, so it's a fast knit anyway. Um, but it was, it felt like it went much more smoothly than knitting my, with my right hand. And I got, I felt like I got less of like finger and hand strain. Um, I think in terms of how I hold the yarn, because I think I, in, unintentionally, I know you probably wouldn't, everyone, no, not everyone probably does this, but I think I just strain the back of my hands quite a lot when I knit. So it definitely felt more comfortable doing it this way. So definitely a technique that was worth learning and I think I'm going to take it forward in a lot of knit projects in the future. I found it hard to purl with the yarn in my left hand, so that's something that's going to need to practice. Every time I got to the purl stages, I kept wanting to put my yarn back in the right hand, so that's going to take a bit of time to get used to, I think. So the fit is generally pretty good. I used um, the yarn, the... Um, I use Drops Air yarn for this, which is a kind of blown yarn. Um, it's a mix of, I think, polyamide and wool. I think it's alpaca. Um, maybe it's alpaca. I will double check and put the details down below. Um, but so it's a mixed yarn. It's not the yarn that the um, original pattern is made in, but one of their recommended substitutes. Um, and I think some of their testers had tried it out before. So I had reasonable confidence going into it that this yarn would work for this project. As a general rule, I am really bad at picking yarn for patterns. I really try to stick to the um, recommended recommendations if I can afford them. Um, or picking something that I've seen someone make it in. Historically, I have made a lot of errors with this. Um, and pick, I will buy yarn and a pattern that just are a terrible match and all ends in tears. I think that's why I've enjoyed getting wool, like, like knitting kits so much because I know that it's going to work. So I'm going to just stand, give you a twirl, and you can see how this hangs. Um, I made a large and kept it cropped, um, just to give you some context about the sizing. So this is the shape of poor daffodils, quite cropped as you can see. This is one of those styles where you have complete control over how long or short you want the body to be. I like it short, so I actually stuck to the um, pattern instructions, which keeps it quite cropped. But of course, if you wanted to have it longer, just keep knitting and you'll have a longer sweater. Same with the sleeves, um, which I've purposely kept at this kind of bracelet length sleeve. Um, because I get my sleeves like stuck in things and food if they're too long and things like that. So I like to keep them a little bit on the shorter side. It's really comfy. I really like this yarn. It feels much like its description. It feels like air. it is light and fluffy. The only downside to it, um, and apparently this is the case for a lot of blown yarn, is that there's not much elasticity to the yarn itself. So I, in future, if I did it and I use this yarn, I would size down a lot more when I got to um, the ribbed sections, because I feel like it's lost a lot of its um, recovery in those spots there. So before I show you the next couple of garments on, I wanted to give you some close up details about what I've been making. So the next two are both from kits. One is a Wool in the Gang kit and one is some Kit Couture. I had promised myself that I wasn't gonna get any more Wool in the Gang kits, but I am a sucker for a sale and I got one anyway. Um, I got a more complicated one than what I've done before. And this is called the New Rules Sweater. Um, this is... This is it. So it's this lace knit intarsia checkerboard patterned crop sweater. Um, and I absolutely love it. This is like the best thing I've ever made from anything by Will and the Gang. There's, you know, actual technique and shaping and stuff. And it's worked a dream. Um, so this is using their um, Phil Good Yarn. Yes it feel good yarn that's what it is and it's again an alpaca mix and it's super soft and fluffy as you can see now i got this because i wanted to learn how to knit intarsia and intarsia is when you are knitting all these different colors in 
and each of these colors is basically knit separately and they're just knit together so it's not like you've got the strands going around the back of the work like it does in fair isle each is in like an individual ball of yarn essentially um and then cut off so the back is just covered in threads afterwards that need to then all be woven in I took to it really well. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't what I expected knitting it in that these are knitted kind of front, back and then sleeves, which are then joined together and then the net line knitted um, at the end of it. But for each of these squares, you need to have a separate ball of yarn. That meant that when I was doing the body, nine balls of yarn were trading around with me. And I just didn't realize that with Intarsia. I had kind of read a little bit about it, but the actual practicality of it, doing it in real life is very different than reading about it on a blog somewhere and it was just like oh my god what am I going to do about all these threads all these balls trailing around after me but I managed to make it work I think the fact that these squares are relatively small helped it meant that by the time I got to the point at when I finished a square the yarn had just about got tangled up enough that it was starting to get tr a bit tricky. I was trying to separate things as I was going. So with each w each row, I kind of untwist everything. But by the end of it, I realised that actually I could pretty much knit um, the entire thing, each square that is, and then unravel all the balls at the end. So that made things a little bit quicker and a little bit easier because I didn't have to worry about it so much. But it was a messy project. It just felt like I just had yarn and the fluff and stuff just everywhere and threads everywhere. Um, but it was worth it, I think. It also has a lace pattern, which really, you know, I love. I love the texture of it. Um, it's hard to see on the black, of course, but you can see kind of really clearly on the beige coloured yarn. Um, ironically, obviously the sweater that I'm wearing at the moment is a very similar colour to the beige bit on here. Unintentional. When I got the yarn for this, which was after I'd made this one in fact, um, I had wanted to pick something that was classic, something that I could wear forever, because I'm like, with all my knits, if I'm putting this much effort into it, I want to wear it for as long as feasibly possible so I always try to pick quite neutral colours and without thinking about it I managed to pick something that was very similar to something that I'd already knitted and um, it's funny how that happens isn't it anyway I wanted to show you the inside of this sweater and oh, I'll pull the sleeves all the way through too so this is what the entire looks like on the inside so you can see where all the kind of colors overlap here. And as you reach the next color, you twist the yarns around and carry on knitting with the new color. Um, it makes sense once you're doing it. I found it really hard to explain. I found it really hard to understand from a lot of the stuff that I was reading about it. And that's why I kind of thought I'd get a kit and just kind of go for it. Funnily enough, the instructions actually don't give you that much um, information about it. They're like, just, just do it. And apparently that's actually all you, you need to do. You just need to go in there and do it. Um, but I really enjoyed the process. I think Intarsia is something that I would really like to do again. Um, I might try to do my own thing, maybe look at seeing what I can do to kind of add colour or colour blocking stuff into other work in the future. I'll show you what this sweater looks like on now. So this is what the new raw sweater looks like in full. Um, much like with the previous sweater, it's cropped, although this is a fair bit more cropped. Um, I think if you don't like this kind of look, you could quite easily just add another row of squares um, to, the to the bottom edge um, to make it longer if you wanted to. I had plenty of yarn left over, so there was definitely enough that if I wanted to, I could have made it into a longer sweater. Um, I just like that cropped look. I have mostly, in fact, all high-waisted trousers, skirts, jeans, so the crop look really works for me. The sleeves are quite long. In theory, I probably could have gone away with having one square less across here, um, and it is that kind of really kind of wide, boxy fit. So it's something to bear in mind if this is something that you are looking at getting yourself and you want to know more about the fit. Um, everything is kind of sewn up and the size my hat my sewing of knits has gotten a lot better as well so that's a much more seamless join than what i would have been able to achieve previously this is all just experience where i'm learning how to kind of do all these things better and um, i'll give you a 12 and you can see what it looks like all the way around so 
so yeah i really really like it um which i'm really glad about because i put a lot of effort into making it that's always been my worry with knits is that i put all this time all this energy all this effort in and actually it just ends up being something that i don't like and i tend to find that my risk is much less if it's a kit like this so this next thing that I wanted to show you in a bit of a close-up detail and uh, to talk about the techniques I used is this. This is the Stenoya Slipover from Kit Couture. It's a Danish um, knitting kit company and they sell the yarn separately but they are all about the kits and they have like the coolest stuff. I've been following them on Instagram for what feels like forever. They do loads of Intarsia knits, loads of um, Ferrar colour knits um, and just in really super modern ways and I've always just been a huge fan Finally, at Christmas time, I decided to treat myself and I got this slipover kit, which I've been eyeing up for quite a long time. I figured with me trying out something new, because I'd never done any kind of colour work or fair art before, um, that having something that's relatively small, like a slipover, as compared to a jumper, would be a good idea. There's also the fact that these kits are basically just quite pricey. Um, so obviously the slipover kit is a little bit cheaper, a little less yarn than using it, than getting a sweater. So I um, opted for this. This colorway is the one that's on the website. It's their sample one. They also have a sample in blue, but they've got lots of other different colorways as well. So if you aren't super keen on the bright colors that this comes in, there's lots of other options out there for you too. So this is knitted with a twisted rib at the hem, armholes and neck and then obviously all of this colour work through the middle. So this is my first time using, using doing any kind of stranded colour work like this and um, it felt really weird I'll be honest to start off with and once I got into it it, it felt better um, but that first time when you're like this is just leaving like loads of loose knit stitches and all these dangly bits at the back and it doesn't feel right at the time but actually once I got into it once I knitted a fair chunk of it it felt really good I actually got really quick at doing the color work I don't know if it's because of the repeating patterns and the counting but I felt like I got through that section of it really really fast it helped that it's all stocking net which means that knitting wise that's my fastest stitch um so that helps kind of in terms of getting into that groove and being able to focus just on the on that counting part which I, I think I quite I found quite therapeutic as opposed to um, having to worry about whether your knit pearls yarns over all that kind of stuff and um, so it was, the actual knitting part is quite straightforward it's just the counting and the colors that are complicated with something like this so I knitted an M um, just so that you know um, which actually is the right size for me. I was a bit torn between whether to do the medium or the large, but actually I wanted quite a close fit for this, so I went for the medium instead. These are knit on really tiny needles. These are knit on three millimeter needles. I had to purchase some specially because I had managed to break my last set of three millimeters. This is the downside of purchasing wooden needles and not taking very good care of them. I think I lent on one, and it just snapped so um yeah had to purchase some new ones for this so yeah i think it's my first time knitting anything this big in this small of a needle as well so i don't think i've ever knitted anything with this fine of a gauge before so it was all new things so this is what this sweater looks like on um, and i love it it's like the best thing i've ever made i've never been so excited to finish a project before i thought that well i'm a gang a um, new roll sweater was like my pinnacle and um, but no this is the pinnacle of knitting for me <laughs> i had so much fun both knitting it and i think i'm gonna have so much fun wearing it it's just an absolute joy um so i'm wearing it with a new anthea blouse by the way so if you're into the sewing as well as the knitting um this is the anna allen pattern which i'll probably go in more detail at another stage um i purposely made it in this white fabric to go with this sweater yes i'm that person but it's a really good look and i love it um i'll show you what this looks like all the way around as you can see it's quite simple um i did make some changes to the pattern itself just so you're aware um 
I found that the images of this slipover um, online, the samples that they knitted, other people's versions of it, left it quite wide at the top there and I have narrow shoulders. I wanted it to be more in here. So when it got to this point where I was decreasing, I decreased three extra st stitches on each side um, to bring it in slightly and I took out those six stitches from the neck. So again, the neck is a little bit more narrow than um, than the original would have been and they do that both for the front and the back so the neckline here is 12 stitches narrower than what the original would have been so personal preference i think that that was an easy enough um change to make to the pattern in order to get the best fit for me and um, it doesn't really affect anything at um, in terms of the ribbon or anything because you are just picking up per the um kind of space available there's not a set number of stitches that you're picking up at this point i'll give you a tour and you can see what it looks like all the way around so i'm super glad that i went for this sizing i think if i'd gone up a size which i was super tempted to do at the time i think it would have been too big i think that this really works as something that's a little bit more fitted in this case um and i think that's put a bit more true to the sample images that i've seen so i'm kind of landing right between the medium and the largest with the kit couture stuff and i think that the kind of precise sizing that i would end up going for will always depend on the kind of fit that i wanted from the garment so this one obviously i wanted a bit more tight fitting if i wanted a sweater that was a little bit looser i might have opted for something that's a bit that's a, the large instead um so yeah i hope you love it as much as i do <laughs> probably no one will love it as much as i do to be fair i really love it <laughs> so my last knit to share with you is this bobble hat so this was a palette cleanser of a make that I did over Christmas between making the Aosta sweater and um, starting this slipover. Um, I had a ball of Will and the Gang's Crazy Sexy World lying around um, in this lovely eucalyptus green. I think that I had accidentally bought it, like I had left it in a basket and went to check out and got it in the post um, a little while after that um i don't know what i was thinking like what i was planning to make but when you have one ball of wool i always feel like you're kind of well, you are limited in what you can do they nearly always end up as a hat for me um and this is what i made so this is a free pattern that i got off ravelry i'll link to it down below um and it's got these lovely kind of triangular pearled section pearled, like, these triangular garter sticks garter stitch sections oh my god my words um um and in between all the stocking net bits before decreasing at the top there um i decided to use my ginormous pom-pom maker to make the biggest pom-pom i could for the top part um just because it's a really chunky yarn and i feel like chunky yarn needs giant pom-poms now i actually don't wear this very much i obviously have a fringe now and I always feel like fringes and hats don't mix. I don't know why I made a hat with this. Um, I always felt like a hat is a commitment with a fringe because once it goes on, it is not coming back off again. Um, so if I was going anywhere indoors, which is obviously what we're doing at the moment, um, because it's cold out, it means that, <coughs> excuse me, it means that that hat has to stay on because it's gonna just squish all the bounce out of this fringe. Um, pretty quickly actually it's quite a tight fit hat here i'll pop it on anyway so you can see what it looks like so nice snug fit ginormous pom-pom on the top it does look cute with a fringe i'm not gonna lie but it's just yeah i just love the bouncy fringe can't get over it just don't want things ruining it i feel like i've regressed to my teenage self with regards to the fringe i used to be like this a lot when i was little um and it's very very like overprotective and careful about how this fringe looks like to the general public <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed this video and um managed to you know glean some sort of amusement from seeing what i've been knitting recently um i have one more project on the go at the moment it's another kit couture make so annoyingly after i bought this one literally a week later they went on sale they had 25 percent off as their winter sale so i bought a second kit um it's the cow's sweater which i'll show you a picture of here 
I've literally just started it, like I started it two days ago. It's another um, Fairwild style knit um, and I actually picked the colorway that they, again, that they had in the sample. I was toying between doing something a bit more sensible, but I was like, no, if I'm gonna make this better, I'm actually gonna do a fun one. I've made too many sensible choices in the past. So I decided just to go, go big, go big or go home as they say. So who knows how long it's going to take for me to finish that one. It's obviously a much bigger project than the slip over, um, but it is knit on bigger needles. So you never know. It might be just a short while before you'll see that one on here too. So hopefully I'll see you again soon, guys. Take care. Bye now.